Hello everyone and today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called Along with the Gods. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere in the population center of Korea, a large building is burning in flames while a firefighter named Hong jumps out from the building, trying to save a civilian's life. His rope is scorched by the furious intensity, causing him to fall rapidly onto the ground without arriving on the safety pad. His whole life flies away with a sense of finality. However, shockingly, the man can awaken later saving the young lady from being killed. He gets up and surges towards the young lady's loved ones, attempting to check whether the casualty is harm, yet at the same no matter how hard he talks, nobody appears to be answering. Unexpectedly, he hears a voice calling out to him from a far distance and sees two individuals in suits grinning towards him in the midst of the disarray. Hong has a go at advising them to pull back from the falling garbage, yet before long notification the firemen to save a man who very closely resembles the principal character himself. The lady named Chun lets Hong know that he's paragon before he kicked the bucket, and they are here to help him through the seven preliminaries of decisions. The other gatekeeper called Mac lets him know that their chief is hanging tight for them before the doors towards the preliminaries, and they need to go there the present moment. Hong experiences difficulty taking this data in and gradually leaves while checking out his confidants grieving not without a fight. He shouts that he can't kick the bucket right now as he needs to see his mom. Yet entirely the man's body starts suspending in the air towards the Goliath entrance. Hong keeps yelling about seeing his mom. The fact that he's makes while the gatekeeper is contacted so mindful towards his parent even in the afterlife. They show up in various aspects where thousands of individuals are going towards the entryways of judgment. What's more, Hong meets the gatekeeper chief called Edge, who's assisted 47 spirits with resurrecting in the previous 100 years. At the point when the pioneer compliments Hong for being a paragon, the man turns away and declines, expressing that he's not a decent individual by any means. They enter through the doors of judgment, yet are magically transported to a terrible spot loaded with magma called the Pile of Homicide. Mac is stunned to see their area and right away questions Hong on the off chance that he's killed somebody in his life. However, the man denies having at any point finished something so terrible. Rim makes sense of that causing somebody's demise in a roundabout way through inaction as likewise judged by the preliminaries, which might be the explanation that they're here. Hong shows up on an arena where enormous entryways on the ground opens up, uncovering a monster pit loaded up with magma. Individuals who are rebuffed attempt frantically to move out, however they persistently consume inside the ocean of blazes. The investigators start the preliminary by blaming Hong of not saving one of his partners when he got the opportunity to do as such, which in the long run prompted the man's passing. They request that Hong experiences inside the magma pit for quite a long time, to make up the transgression of not saving his companion. Ed safeguards the man by mentioning to nearer analyze on what truly occurred at the episode. Obviously, Hong attempted to save frantically his companion at the scene, however they proved unable to move the stone that the fireman was caught under. In the wake of understanding the sad circumstance, his associate advised him to leave and save the other regular people all things being equal. In view of Hong's choice, he had the option to save eight individuals that evening. Edge contends that the man's gallantry ought to be thought about while passing judgment on his choice to abandon his companion. Seeing the man's grit at helping other people, the appointed authority chooses to excuse him from the charges and permit him to give to the following preliminaries. In spite of the fact that Hong has won the primary hearing, he is significantly impacted by the indication of his partner's demise. He requests to know why the gatekeepers are making a difference him, as he doesn't trust himself to be a paragon. It just so happens, the gatekeepers have their own plans, as they made an arrangement with the Lord of Misery who's called Yomra. In the event that the three can help 49 dead spirits to go through the preliminaries and resurrect inside the 100 years, they can likewise become people as well. They ultimately show up at the preliminary of Lethiji, where Chun makes sense of the relative multitude of works that Hong has finished. The man has never been sluggish all through his life, and consistently helped other people regardless of where he went. This even method thumping over a bee colonies and exposing his entire group to horrible stings, or on the other hand protecting some surly feline on the edge of a structure and breaking the proprietor's Lamborghini with his head. The adjudicator was so moved by Hong's commitments that she arranges the examiners to right away construct a sculpture to pay tribute to the paragon. 
be that as it may, when she asks about why the man needed to carry on with his life so completely, Hong answered that the explanation was just for cash. After hearing the man's response, the appointed authority rapidly changes her decision and tells the investigators to send Hong into the discipline, where a Goliath machine pursues all the individuals at real fault for sluggishness, squashing their bones and taking care of them to the fishes. The watchmen make an honest effort to help their litigant and asks the goddess to look nearer at the man's life. The explanation Hong endeavored to bring in cash was on the grounds that he needed to help his mom who was debilitated and his sibling who needed to go to graduate school. Hong worked such a lot of that he frequently ignored his own well-being and his craving for cash is subsequently not because of childishness. Subsequent to understanding the man's actual inspirations, the goddess views that Hong isn't liable as he simply needed to help his loved ones. The gathering rapidly sheets the boat that will take them to the following area, however previously they can celebrate, they notice that they are being sought after by various beasts. The group releases their weapons and attempts their best to shield against the animals. They're ready to overcome a considerable lot of the foes by cutting them into pieces, yet the skipper in the long run gets pushed over the boat and scarcely holds tight. Mac is compelled to safeguard the boat without anyone else while allowing his chief the opportunity to recuperate. In the at long last second, Mac strikes an enormous stone point of support that makes the stones fall, at long last saving them from the beast's interest. The man makes sense of that this can occur since a group of Hong has passed on and became a vindictive soul. To prevent different beasts from chasing after them later on, Ed chooses to visit Hong's family to figure out reality with regards to what occurred. He goes to Hong's occupant and notification that the mother is obviously alive, this can on limb imply that it was the sibling Su who passed on what Smo, transformed into a wrathful soul. The insidious atmosphere attempts to take off while the watchman pursues intently behind. Edge attempts to stop the soul by getting it utilizing his weapon, however the phantom figures out how to keep away from the assaults from behind. The two in the end conflicts together and thumbs the gatekeeper away, permitting the spurt to vanish as Edge searches frantically for his prey. The watchman follows the path to a military base, where he saw the officer talking about Su and alluding to him as a miscreant. What's much more inquisitive is that the chief also, one of his kindred fighters is obviously concealing something. Edge camouflages is a colonel of the military and continues to scrutinize the commander about Su, blaming him for killing the man. Shockingly, the chief starts coercing the watchman out of dread, which further affirms that he is answerable for the subling's passing. On the opposite side, Hong is being addressed by the goddess of duplicity and blamed for composing various bogus wills and confirmations for his partner, which he neglected to save before. He gave these works to the man's little girl, misleading her by claiming to be the young lady's father. The goddess promptly arranges the man to be restricted and plans to rebuff him by cutting off his tongue. Fortunately, Edge can interface with his group through clairvoyance and contends for Hong's activities. It just so happens, he additionally composed bogus letters to his mom, lying about how extraordinary his life is in the way that well off he became. Edge contends that these are endeavors to solace individuals that he thinks often about by giving them trust that reality can't offer, what's more, permitting them to live on. After understanding that Hong did this all together to give others motivation to live on, the god excuses the man's violations as the expectations were never to hurt. After the preliminary, Edge misleads Hong and tells him that his families are doing fine, yet rapidly illuminates the group about reality with respect to Hong, sibling. Edge travels once again into the past to see what truly occurred on the of Night Su's demise, and understands that his companion Dong shot the man coincidentally in the wake of turning off the security. Dong summoned their skipper right, and rather than attempting to save the perishing man, the warrior chooses to bury Su and stow away the proof with the goal that his advancement wouldn't be dirtied. Edge takes a gander at the collection of Su and understands in shock that the man was really not dead, constraining him to recall the recollections from his previous where his dad was likewise covered alive. Simultaneously, Hong has shown up in the damnation of foul play, where individuals are frozen for a really long time to pay for their wrongdoing of not helping other people. Fortunately, Hong's calling as a fireman implies that he'll not be decided here, however all things being equal be permitted to continue on toward the following area. During the ride inside the trolley, it's uncovered that the gatekeepers all have their recollections eradicated with the exception of their chief edge. 
Mac attempts to prevent his partner from uncovering any longer about their constraints, however inadvertently illuminates home that his sibling is as a matter of fact the wrathful soul. After understanding reality, the man's shaky mind shakes the whole domain and breaks the streetcar, almost dropping his watchman beneath. In any case, Hong can get a hold of himself in the latest possible second and offers to help his partners. The three ultimately shows up in the damnation of treachery, where a wonderful goddess judges individuals who deceived their friends and family by catching them in a mirror and breaking the casualties. Fortunately, Hong was a paragon in the course of his life furthermore, didn't sell out anybody, permitting him to continue on securely from this area too. At a similar time, Grim can view as the wrathful soul in a dance club where he's attempting to kill one of warriors who covered him alive. The gatekeeper pursues Su immediately, also, they battle ceaselessly in the air while flying through the city. Edge can catch the soul by setting a snare and tying him onto the structure utilizing a mystical rope. The watchman lets the soul know that he wants to excuse his execution as to be renewed, or, in all likelihood he'll be annihilated for eternity. Be that as it may, this simply reminded Sue about how he was covered alive and double-crossed by his best friends, causing him to shout in rage and break free by making a monstrous shockwave. On the other side, after drinking various measures of liquor, Dong has chosen to give the area of the body to Sue's mom, unfit to hold on for the responsibility any longer. The lady opened the guide lastly sees the area of his most youthful child, while Sue observes everything from behind his mom. The vindictive soul goes to Edge and tells the watchman that he has chosen to pardon Dong, subsequent to seeing the officer's culpability and how the area of the body was given to the mother. Sue asks the gatekeeper to behave like a medium so he might converse with Dong once and for all, promising that he'll go through the preliminaries a short time later. The soul talks through the man and tells the officer that he excuses him dot and to not squander any longer new tears on something from the past. In the meantime, Hong has arrived at the damnation of viciousness what smoke, sees a monster opening in which they should bounce. Into to arrive at the preliminaries. The man falls into the huge opening and collides with a goliath rock, yet Mac is capable to get his partner and land adjacent to Hong. In any case, Hong slides towards the two and thumbs them over unintentionally, making them free fall by and by towards the lower part of the pit. Mac surges towards the two while Hong is capable to get the young lady and attempts to save her from the accident very much like before he passed on. Shockingly, their fall is immediately halted without a second to spare in the wake of arriving at the base. The preliminary of savagery starts and the investigators blame Hong for thumping his sibling in high school. This activity was particularly inexcusable as the young man was experiencing ailing health because of how poor the family was at that point. Hong never searched out pardoning, as a matter of fact after the battle, as he took off from his family the exceptionally following day, and never returned home from that point forward. The adjudicator chooses rapidly that the man is at fault for savagery towards his own loved ones, furthermore plans to send him into a pit where individuals are continually hit by rocks is discipline. Seeing that Hong is going to be condemned, Chun rapidly requests the adjudicator to hold off the conviction and check the last preliminary out along with the ongoing one as they are firmly related. This play is exceptionally hazardous as it requires the watchmen to relinquish their powers in the great beyond on the off chance that Hong was viewed as liable on the following preliminary. Tragically, the gatekeepers rapidly learn reality with regards to what occurred on that evening as of the battle. So awakened subsequent to seeing his sibling Bowen, prior to their mother, and requests to know what Hong was doing, yet before Long figures out that the kid was attempting to kill his own mom utilizing a cushion. Su attempted to quickly stop his sibling, which made Hong at last drop the pad what's more, start punching the little fellow ceaselessly with outrage. Incidentally, Hong felt extremely irredeemable at that a great time as their family was so poor and his mom was seriously sick. The main way he accepted that can end their enduring was through death and that's it. Therefore he felt very remorseful a while later and took off from home, staying away forever to his family at any point in the future. In the wake of hearing this, the gatekeepers become irredeemable as they understand that it is basically impossible that they can win the preliminaries now, particularly in the last damnation of obedient irreverence. Simultaneously, Edge is attempting to bring Sue towards his body with the goal that the soul can at long last start the excursion towards resurrection as well. At the point when they show up at the tactical camp, Sue is amazed to see that his mom is here, asking the warriors to carry her to her child's body. 
The skipper of the military sees this and surges towards the lady, tearing her sides into pieces and pushing her onto the ground, causing her to swoon in the effort. Su sees that his mom is being gone after by his executioner and becomes overwhelmed in rage, rapidly transforming into the wrathful soul that he was previously. He breaks liberated from the limitations and snatches onto the gatekeeper, discarding the man utilizing gigantic power. Su's rage turns out to be serious to the point that he turns into a monster cyclone, immersing every one of the troopers nearby and opening a passage towards existence in the wake of death itself. The wrathful soul throws everything around also, making enormous disorder, while Edge attempts frantically to save every one individuals from being killed. Fortunately, Matt can dash into the living world through the entryway and dispatches at Su, splitting away the Goliath sculpture and dazzling the foe. Edge takes the risk and charges in too, catching Su utilizing a mystical rope lastly. Ending the frenzy. In the meantime, the preliminary of Hong starts at the opposite end as ruler Yomra himself chooses to be the adjudicator for the case. The divinity accuses the man of endeavoring to kill his own mom and beating his sibling. In such a frantic time, the Lord likewise uncovers that Hong's mom in fact realized about her child's endeavor kill her, be that as it may, stayed quiet and kept this misfortune inside her heart, which makes the man's wrongdoing far more atrocious. The God presumes that Hong will be rebuffed always in this heck, as he attempted to commit the most horrendously awful thing conceivable of killing the one who gave him life. Unexpectedly, the whole domain starts shaking as a voice starts addressing Hong's mom. It just so happens, Edge has utilized his capacity to permit Su to address his mom in a fantasy. What's more, the child apologizes for his sibling. Su let the lady know that Hong has worked constant for quite some time to help them of all time since that evening, in the wake of feeling remorseful for what he did. Shockingly, the mother uncovers that she has pardoned her child quite some time ago, and apologizes herself for not having the option to give for her youngsters. Hong hears this and falls into tears, while the ruler himself has been moved by their presentation of family. The god concludes that he can never again charge Hong for his wrongdoings, as the casualty has excused him quite some time ago, subsequently permitting the man to be resurrected. Hong hears this and bows towards Chun, saying thanks to the watchman for aiding him through the venture, prior to vanishing into the splendid lights. Back in the human domain, Edge has chosen to bring Su as their 49th rebirth, intending to accomplish their arrangement for the Lord so they can be renewed also. The gathering shows up inside the damnation of obedient scandalousness before various evil spirits and charges towards the force to open a way to the ruler of misery himself. So what do you all think about this film? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe.